This week on Motorhead Garage, Brian learns how to repair rusted bodywork with Brothers Truck Parts. And later on, John checks out a way to accessorize Jeeps. All of this and more next on Motorhead Garage, presented by Dustless Blasting. Welcome to Motorhead Garage presented by Dustless Blasting. If you own a classic car, or you're restoring a classic car, or you're just trying to maintain your classic car, rust is going to be a part of your program. We're going to show you how to fix it today. I'm here with Steve from Brothers Trucks. Steve, we've got tools in front of us, but tell me what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to repair some rust on this fender we have in front of us, but really the best way to repair rust is to be prepared ahead of time. So um, we've got some grinders. We're going to use those to cut the metal. We've got some clamps. We use those to clamp our new patch panel in place. We've got our protective gear, uh, glasses and gloves that are necessary. We've got a scribe as well as a pen, pencil, and something with a straight edge so we can mark our areas we're going to take off. And also, well we've got our new metal. And our trusty metal glue gun there, the MIG welder. That's true, and we're going to let you operate that. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty much it. And um, let's just take a look sure. at what we have here to work with. All right, so. When we're talking about best practices for repairing rust, um, you did this earlier. You kind of grabbed this panel and you slapped it on here. And I think you were explaining, oh yeah, we're just gonna hack this off right here and replace this. Well, that's really not best practices. Best practices for repairing rust is identifying where your rust is and just taking out what you need to take out to get rid of the rust. Leave as much of the original metal as you can in there. Um, and then we've got a brace back here. We're gonna see how bad that is, decide if we're gonna replace sure. it or not. And there's some steps that you wanna take if you end up needing to replace the brace. Um, you, there's some steps you wanna maybe put in front of some other steps so you have your overall length remain the same throughout the Absolutely, process. Absolutely, yeah, and that's one of the most important parts of this. You need to maintain some sort of a reference point here when you do this work to make sure that your fender is the correct length. We don't want to end up with a, with a fender that has this end three inches longer than the Exactly, front of the exactly. So um, just for instance, if you're going to end up having to replace the brace, you're going to want to replace the brace first. Use your remaining metal here on your fender to identify how long that brace. Use that as a reference point. Put your brace in there, get it cut right, and get your brace set up. And then repair your outside metal. Now if you're going to repair just the outside metal like we're probably going to do today, we're going to leave that brace there as our reference point so when we put that new metal on, we know exactly where it goes. Gotcha. All right. Well, let's begin the surgery, doctor. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to get my, my marker as well as something with a straight edge. We're going to come in here and we're going to eyeball the rust and um, we've already looked at this from the back so we know where the rust is in the back but we're going to eyeball the rust and then what I'm going to do is just make some sort of rough lines on here to kind of let us know where we're going to be cutting this out. And we'll take just about like that and try to keep the lines as straight as possible because when you're cutting with the die grinder or whatever you're going to use to cut this, I mean, you're not going to want to be making a Cop bunch of swoopy yeah, lines and yeah. stuff. We really want to be able to make a straight line, hack it off. Um, so I think that would just about do it. And now we're just going to, uh, we're going to break some of the welds loose back here and uh, on the bottom of this brace. And then we're going to get to work with the grinder. Cool. All right. So we rolled our fender over and when we did, we actually discovered some rust on the brace. We weren't initially planning on replacing part of the brace, but we found that rust, Steve, like every other rust repair project known to man, there's always more than you think. Right, and it's always good to get rid of all of it. I mean, this is pretty minor, but reality is that's just going to get worse and worse over time. So while we're in here doing surgery, might as well go ahead and do that. And you can see, like we mentioned before, the brace came this long, but we're not going to use all of it. We're just going to use what we need. So we went up a little ways. And I will mention that our intention is to take the fender off about here. So what we did is we took a little bit more of the brace so we don't have those two seams in the same spot. The brace will be about an inch higher than that so we aren't welding those back together and making a weak spot. Absolutely. And as far as our reference point went, we talked a little bit about the fact that if we didn't have to replace this brace, the original brace would be our reference to replace the outer skin of the fender, but since we did, we used what remained of the outer skin to make sure our brace is in the right place. Right, and so now we're in the right spot. Our hole's gonna be back in the right spot, so when we go to mount the fender, it's gonna be great. And with the new brace in place, we'll be able to very easily identify the reference point for when we do the outer piece. Perfect. All right, let's get this welded up, and then we'll uh, take off the rest of the fender and flip it over. Okay, all right. We 
going to clean up this weld. We'll be back after the break to continue our rust repair on this fender. Motorhead Garage, presented by Dustless Blasting, is being brought to you by X-Venture Off-Road Trailer, behind you all the way. S-Pod, the original over-the-windshield switch control. Dirty Dog Automotive, the world's best netting and sunscreens to fit your Jeep. And by Dustless Blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. Nice work. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage presented by Dustless Blasting. As you can see, Steve just finished cutting off our rusted outer skin of the fender. You can see that our repaired brace is kind of hanging out back there. He was very careful not to touch that brace when he was making his cut. And now he's going to lay that patch panel on there just to kind of get a, be able to lay a scribe mark down, right? Right. That's sort of it. We have our brace now as a reference point. So I'll slide this up here, make sure that that's butted up on the brace. And then I'll take the scribe that we have. And I'm just going to get under here and make a scribe line so we have something to cut from. Nice panel, real heavy gauge steel. I mean, it totally matches the factory, uh, you know, the factory gauge. So it's right. a good quality piece. Sure. Now that we have that, we'll uh, use a die grinder, cut along this line, and then we'll have a perfect piece to fit back in here and butt it up. Now, back in the old days, a lot of guys would do uh, like a recessed overlap weld, you know? And that was great back then, but what happened is a lot of those repairs that happened back in the 90s ended up catching water or debris in between the, that overlap and rusting out much later, and then we find ourselves doing this again. So common practice now is to butt these two pieces of metal together and then stitch weld them much like you did with the brace in the back of the yeah, fender. Manage the heat by just basically making spots along the way and working your way to fill in the whole Right, space. yeah, yeah. So you don't overheat it because otherwise you overheat it, it warps like crazy. And then what you end up with is a bunch of Bondo filling your perfectly <laughs> good metal. So let me go hack this off and uh, we'll come back. I'll let you stitch this back on. So we get the panel cut, Steve fitted it. I've been putting some, uh, putting some stitch welds in it, just kind of some quick tacks. Tell me about stitch welding, Steve, why is that important? So it's important because uh, you don't want to overheat the panel. You want to keep the panel cool. So you do a little weld, move, do a little weld, move, then come back and do a fill and until you've gotten a complete weld across. Because if you overheat the panel, then you're going to have a lot of warping and you're going to need a lot more body work. You're a better welder than me, but you're still no. not the best <laughs> welder. And so. This is a really great example of the, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, the guy at home who isn't a great welder, but he can stitch along, it, this is a perfect job for him because let's face it, we weren't going for a pure metal, paint over metal. We're gonna have to use some body filler sure. on here anyway. Everyone is, That's this is what's gonna happen anyhow. So it doesn't have to be perfect. And you know, we've got a couple little air pockets here. We'll go back and fill those later. But let's get this finished up, yep. finish the stitching on this side. We'll turn it over and show the people at home how to do a rosette weld uh, to refasten that brace we put on there earlier. Fantastic, All right. close your eyes. All right, so we got our fender turned back over and Steve talked to me what I'm looking at here. I see some cuts and I see some spots right here we're gonna be working with. So yeah, we flipped it over, did a little cleanup. You know, we had a couple holes, it's thin metal, we're not great welders, but that's, it's, it's bound to happen. Trial by fire. Anyway, maybe. we've clamped everything in place. What I did is I took our die grinder, I made a couple cuts here so it'll be easier to fold over our metal. We'll also be able to use those cuts kind of as a guide where to weld and replicate our spot welds that the factory had. Sure. And then down here, what I've done is taken a drill kind of sunk it in, not all the way through, and then what we'll be able to do is weld right in the middle of that. That's called a rosette weld, and that'll really mimic the, the factory spot welds that this brace and fender would have been mated together with before. Got to thank Black Label Coatings for blasting these fenders for us, getting all the junk out of the way, and getting us a nice service to work with. Go to brotherstrucks.com. You can learn about everything these guys have going on, whether we're talking patch panels or the myriad of products they offer for Chevrolet and GMC pickup trucks through all generations. Steve? Thank you so much for coming in today. Thanks, man. I'm going to hit these rosette welds, and we'll be back with more Motorhead Garage presented by Dustless Blasting after this. 
Motorhead Garage, presented by Dustless Blasting, coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage, presented by Dustless Blasting. You know, we got this good looking Jeep in the shop here, and no matter how you cut it, you know, this fair lead here, it's not going to do the job. You see it? It's just kind of chrome, it's boring. You got a nice looking winch, you got a nice looking bumper, you got a really good front end, but this is boring. We got the solution. Bill, you're here from Wacky 4x4. Man, you got a whole array of products, but how'd you come up with this? Tell us a little bit about your company. Uh, it's a very small company. When I started out, uh, my wife has a CJ and uh, we were putting um, eyelashes on it. People kept saying, you know, it looked good with a set of lips. So I built a set of lips that were um, kind of flat and blang, about like that fairly. Yep. And that's when I come up with um, the 3D effect. Bill, you have a whole array here from small to big. Let's talk about some of these products right across the table. Uh, the little ones are designed for the four wheelers and side by sides. They have a four and seven eighths inch center to center and you have a six inch center to center for the side by sides. Okay. So that was basically um, the design on them to give them something more of a flash instead of the dull, the dull fairly that they have. Now what about the pickup trucks and Jeeps and ones with the big winch? Now there, there's quite a variety for them. We have uh, the skull and crossbones, the bone, the larger bone, the lips, um, the football. This is basically what I have right now but there will be more in the future. Now, two unique things. Number one, we got some eyes here and even a camera built in. Tell me a little bit about that, and then let's talk about the Hydro Dip. The one with the skull and crossbones with the eyes, it just looks awesome on the Jeep. And the camera concept is for when you're going over a hill, you can't see what's on the other side of that hill. So with the camera, it gives you the option to see what's on the other side of the hill so you don't run into your buddy. And what about that one? That's unique. This one is my Hydro Dip one where I can put the eyes in it and the camera if need be, but it's a powder coat base and uh, it's hydro drip and then clear coated. So it's a real durable piece of equipment. Now, Bill, I really like the lips, but you know what? It's making me miss my wife a lot. This one looks just like our co-host, Brian. Let's go ahead and put this one on the Jeep. Now, it's really simple. The old one just had two bolts that came out. The other one come off. I mean, you know how ugly that was. What do we do now? Basically, we put a little piece of tape behind there to hold the nuts. Okay. And then you can they can feed that through there All right. and get it started. Get it started on the nut. We got it held by tape. Also good to mention, we got a little nine volt battery burning the eyes here with the light. What do we do? We actually wire that to the truck wiring? Yeah, you take the nine volt battery off and uh, it's basically a plug and play. That's also gonna run the camera as well? Yes, sir. It's, uh, it's all hooked up um, for the, the fair lead will be hooked up for that way. Okay. Tell me about the, a little bit about the process. What, how do you make these things? Uh, the process is I build the mold um, which is made out of wood and then um, which I got about 60 hours in this one and then um, I send it to a, a foundry mm -hmm. and they pop a cast and then they send it back to me and then I do all the machining on the product and then I send it to powder coating which all my products are um, powder coated you have uh, specialty colors call me or email me and then we'll set you up for that and on the eyes and the camera that's also an option. You can um, call me, email me, and tell me you want eyes in the camera. Yeah, it looks good. I mean, this is a huge difference. If you can see this here, I mean, we just had that bland little thing. Now we got the whole skull head going on up here. Yep, looks just like Brian. Also got the camera right there for, like you said, the rock crawling. You got the eyes. You, you can hook it with your headlights. I mean, you can put them on. That's pretty awesome. Now tell me about your website. Where do we go find this? Um, I'm at www.wacky4x4.com. I'm a small company. It's not a, um, a big multi-million dollar company. I'm, I'm a little short man. <laughs> right, well go to the website, give them a call. Get your fair lead, make your Jeep, Primo. We'll be right back with more Motorhead Garage right after this break. Motorhead Garage, presented by Dustless Blasting, is being brought to you by Dual Liner, the only bid liner that works. Custom Trucks Unlimited, go big or go down the road. Flexalite, still making it in the USA. And by Dustless Blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage presented by Dustless Blasting. 
So if you're like John or I or millions of other Americans, your smartphone is never that far away from your side. And that goes for when you're in your car as well. Now, when you're in your car, the thing's probably rattling around in the passenger seat or in the cup holder somewhere. And maybe you're using it for navigation, taking your eyes off the road to look away at your phone. Well, the folks at Gravity X have developed a smartphone car mount that allow you to get that phone up on the dash, and it's super easy to use. Yeah, it really is. It's really cool because you get a plate with it. Everything comes in the kit, the glue, the stick the tape, everything. It's really nice. So you can actually find a little crevice in there. You can do it. And what's really nice is you can turn that over 180 degrees. Perhaps you want to get on this side of the dash over here. You can do that. Ours goes right here. Now it doesn't go all the way in. So there's also another option they give you. We took a razor blade and we etched the plate. We're going to go ahead and use a flat plate. So I'm going to get rid of that one. Put a flat plate in just like that. Then you can stick it anywhere you really want it to go. This is an actual perfect spot right here. I'll prep the surface. You get the tape on. We'll be ready to go. Absolutely, and the 3M double-sided tape is provided. This is good stuff, and it's going to keep your phone mounted. Now, the reason the thing is called Gravity X is very simple. It uses the weight of your phone, as well as a couple of silicone pads in the S-shaped mount to hold the phone onto the dash. Now, it's real nice because, you know, there's no moving parts on it. Keeps your view in the road, keeps everything going smooth, and it's going to be nice because we can put the phone right there. We'll have it at our access, but yet we're not doing any texting or looking at the phone as we're going. It's going to be great. All right, you get that stuck on there. All we got to do is come over here now, push it on the spot we want it, which is located right there. It says hold down for 30 seconds, which is real nice, 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, it's going to be stuck. Now, in reality, you don't want to put the phone up there for about an hour. Yeah, let the, let the glue right. the tape cure. But the phone will sit right here. It's going to look really, really nice sitting there looking at it. It'll support the weight of the phone, no problem. Where do we go find them? You go to gravityxmount.com. That's where you can learn all about the Gravity X mount and how you can use it in your vehicle. Since 1977, Custom Auto Sound has been allowing auto enthusiasts to install a high-quality stereo system in a classic vehicle while retaining those classic interior looks. Take this 1950 Chevrolet pickup truck, for example. It's kind of a different application. The radio sits up in the dash. These guys have developed a high-quality digital unit that we can put in the dashboard, and no one will know the difference whether it came right from the factory or it was built yesterday. This thing has all the modern technology you could want, from being able to control the sound, fading it left, right, front, and back, being able to apply things like your iPod, your iPhone, anything you want to plug into it. Bluetooth connectivity really does have it all. The company is a lot more than just head units, though. Take these, for example, the company's undercover two speakers. Designed to fit either under a seat or mount vertically on a flat surface, Surface. They provide high quality sound and their slim design allows you to place them wherever you like in the vehicle. Again, a situation like our 1950 Chevrolet truck here, not a lot of places to put these, but under the seat is absolutely perfect. One of the things that classic car enthusiasts love is maintaining the interior look of their machine. And the best part is you're talking about 300 watts of sound so you can enjoy your exhaust and you can blast those tunes out the radio as you head down the highway. You can visit them on the web at customautosound.com to learn more about your application and your needs. Well, perhaps you want a small part like a door handle, a clip, or a part that's incorporated into a big assembly. And you think you have to buy the big assembly. Well, no more. Tom from Rock Auto, you got that covered. And a lot of these parts, even with the OEM design, they even improve on that, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, you don't have to get the, some giant assembly. A, a good example is the, uh, the shift interlock mechanism for the the early uh, big Chryslers, the yeah. Dodge Magnum, Dodge Charger. Yeah, the little pink plastic pin. Yeah, he searched on like <laughs> pink thingy is what yeah. it was called. And that plastic would break, and the, uh, the part manufacturers, uh, Standard Motor Products came with this blue thingy that's made out of metal right. that, that should last forever. Yeah, and that's huge. I mean, I'm not even going to take my car out of gear without that, and that breaks all the time. So all I have to do is just go on here, get an upgraded piece and a little piece. I don't need the whole shift assembly. Right, yeah, you don't have to buy the whole console and who knows what. Very cool. Uh, another example, is, uh, new cars are built to really tight tolerances, which is great, but there's often no way to adjust the, the alignment, the caster, camber, and so forth. Yeah. We have um, uh, kits. So th this is for the 2003 Buick LeSabre. It's a caster camber bolt kit that the bolts offset a little bit so you can, you can have some adjustment there. Right. I mean, the tires are going to wear regardless. I know the manufacturers don't want to mess with it, but any aftermarket shop's going to, I can get that kit, put it in. I got caster and camber back going down the road. Uh, another example is those uh, plastic thermostat housings that are, are common now. Uh, this is one is from a 2001 Ford Focus. Um, over time, they distort or, or crack when, you're, when it's installed, over tightened or something. So, yeah, there's replacements for those that should last longer. Yeah, it's going to warp in no time. You know, Brian's got a 1990 Yugo. I'm sure he's got some parts. He would like some <laughs> OE upgrades. We'll go on there and look for it. But you know what? You can find all the parts you ever needed at rockauto.com.
Well, if you drive a Ferrari like the one behind us, you're probably not taking it off-road. But if you have a UTV or an ATV and you drive it like me, really rough on the weekends and park it all week, this Z-Max Minute's for you. We're talking about Z-Max in ATVs and UTVs, Lenny. You want to extend the life of those so you can have a better time when you are able to get out there. You want to reduce the wear and tear on the vital engine parts and improve the overall performance. That's what Z-Max does by cleaning out the carbon deposits, soaking into the metal to protect that long term investment even when you store it. And that's the key too because we're talking about ethanol and the fuel. This is going to help? Absolutely. As it soaks into the metal, that's the quiet protection that even while you're away from your bike or ATV, UTV, it's there protecting to keep those harmful deposits from starting to build up for when you need to turn it on and go. And That's I want to turn it on and go, especially Absolutely. when it's the weekend. Now, a lot of people, I mean, maintenance really isn't a thing with UTVs and ATVs. They might not maintain it as much, so this will help out as well. We're talking about engine that's actually going to protection and it's going to soak into the metal and protect it. Two cycle, four cycle, gas or diesel, it will do it. Z-Max is the product for UTVs and ATVs. Get it, pour it in, and you'll be able to go on those great weekend adventures that you like to. Now, smaller quantities, probably they're a lot smaller. About two ounces per gallon of fuel. That'll take care of things, and you'll be able to be on your way with Z-Max. Well, you know what? It's a lot of fun riding those UTVs and ATVs, but more importantly, you want to protect them as well. So next time you load it up and you're headed to the trails, just stop, get you some Z-Max poured in there, and you'll be protected. Well, that's it for us here at Motorhead Garage in this episode. If you have a cool product you want to see on the show, email jeff at masterstv.com, and maybe you'll find yourself here in the spacious Motorhead Garage TV shop. Come back and see us next week. We've got a whole lot more cool stuff for you.